Michael. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about depression. I promise it will not be a depressing topic. What is depression? Well, if you watch the movies, you read books, you see dramatic plays. The kind of Hollywood idea of depression is that you're very, very sad and you might be demotivated. Um, it usually has to do with your feelings and you're just, you're down, right? And that is certainly is depression, but there's different types of depression. And the type of depression that never seems to be accurately portrayed is clinical depression, bipolar disorder, manic depression. And that is less of your mood and feeling sad and having an external reason to be sad. Like if you lose your job and you get depressed, that's probably not due to a chemical imbalance in the brain, it's because you lost your job and you're sad. But there's a different kind of depression that occurs physically. It occurs because the different parts of the brain are not communicating with each other in a normal fashion. Uh, the neurons, the synapses, are firing too slowly. And across the synapses, like little fingers, little tendrils reaching out, um, there's chemical signals being sent back and forth and one of the chemicals responsible for governing that is serotonin. If you do not have enough serotonin, the, the synapses cannot talk to each other. They can't fire. They can't communicate as quickly as they should. And one of the causes of clinical depression is lack of serotonin or resistance to serotonin. In other words, the brain has normal levels of it, but it just doesn't affect the brain as much as it should. And what you'll find with a lot of medications that are prescribed for depression is that they are SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. Once again, not a neurologist, so if I'm getting this wrong, please don't roast me alive in the comments. But anyway, what SSRIs do is they, they slow down the reabsorption of that serotonin at the synapse, which causes the synapses to communicate faster, to fire, to, to to speak to each other more often. And this helps alleviate the physical symptoms of clinical depression. Now, what are these physical symptoms? Uh, do you get a fever? Is it a head cold? Do you feel nauseous? Is it like getting the flu? Well, it's not like getting the flu, but it's also exactly like getting the flu. This is why. When you get the flu, is there anything you can do to stop the symptoms? Is there something you can take that will stop a fever? like provide immediate relief? Is there something you can take that will make you not feel sick at all? Or are there things that can kind of make it a little bit more bearable, but for the most part, you just have to kind of wait it out? Depression is like that. You just have to wait it out. We'll come back to that here in a minute. So back to the physical symptoms of depression. It affects your perception and your cognition. It prevents you from, from thinking normally. You're, you have different parts of your brain that all specialize in different functions, and they have to communicate with each other in order for your, your cognition, your thinking, your perception to, to work normally. And in a depressed state, they don't communicate in a normal fashion. Now, what's that like to be on the inside when your brain is not working correctly? Well, imagine you won the lottery. Let's say that if money is important to you, that you won the lottery. You didn't just win the lottery. You won the biggest lottery that has ever been won. And imagine your ideal romantic interest delivers that lottery winning to you and then professes that they are madly in love with you. And while this is happening, five of the people you respect most in the world sit there and applaud and cheer for you and... and you should be feeling on top of the world. When you're depressed, all of that can happen and you will feel nothing. You will feel absolutely nothing. The flip side of that, you could lose your job, your cat could die, horrible things can happen to you, and guess what you feel? Nothing. It's just that you physically can't feel anything. You can feel pain, if you drop a hammer on your toe, it still hurts. Um, if you eat something tasty, it, it's tasty, but you don't derive any joy from it. Like when you 
when you eat a hot fudge sundae, there's a little part of your brain that says, hey, I like this, and it releases dopamine, and you feel good eating a hot fudge sundae. You still taste the sweet. It still tastes good. But that little reward your brain gives you, if it's giving it to you, you're not aware of it. You feel nothing. Activities that you normally enjoy, things that make you feel good, things that get you out of bed in the morning, you feel nothing, absolutely nothing. The world just becomes shades of gray. And that is what depression is like for me. That is my own private experience with it. It's not feeling sad. It's not being down. Um, it's not being morose. It's not being self-pitying either. It's physical symptoms, much like getting the flu. And my way of dealing with that is I treat it like the flu. If I need to stay in bed because I'm not feeling well, I'll stay in bed and I won't feel bad about it. I will self-care. I will do what I need to do to get through it the same way I would if I had a cold or the flu. I would be patient with myself. I mean, if I got the flu and I was sniffling and sneezing and I had a sore throat, I wouldn't feel like I'm less of a person because I got sick. I wouldn't feel weak or that there was something wrong with me. I would be like, okay, I've gotten the flu before. It will pass. No matter how bad it seems today, no matter how long I'm sick, I know that there will come a day when I will not be sick anymore. And it's just a matter of waiting. And that is how I deal with depression. I don't take any medication for it. Um, I don't have therapy or anything like that. I am patient with myself. And I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it will pass, no matter how bad it seems. Um, I was depressed in this way for an entire year once, and back in my early 20s. Imagine going an entire year not feeling anything at all. It was a rough year, not going to lie, but I made it through it. Now, most depressive episodes, at least for me, again, I'm relating my private experience, they last anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to a few months. I've never had another year-long episode, thank goodness, knock on wood. What am I like when I'm depressed? Well, you would never know it. I could be depressed right now, and I would show no outward signs of it. People that have this problem are very good at hiding it, and there's a reason that we hide it. My own private reasoning is that it does no good to talk about it. This isn't a sadness or, or a feeling or, or something that I need to get off my chest and talking about it will make me feel better. Again, I feel nothing, nothing at all. So talking about it does absolutely no good. Number two is there's a stigma around self-care and around mental issues that people have. And I feel this is very important to talk about, especially in a time of COVID, when a lot of people are struggling. They're really struggling with this change of lifestyle, feeling cut off, feeling isolated. Um, we need to talk about self-care. We need to talk about health issues like this. We shouldn't have a stigma around it. Now, on the flip side, there's a certain type of person that seems to thrive on the attention that their depression gets them. I guess you'd call it like a Munchausen syndrome kind of thing, you know, where, where somebody likes being sick so that they're the center of attention. People like that annoy the crap out of me. And maybe that's my own personal problem. Maybe there's nothing wrong with them being like that. But um, you, you see it in musicians and and creative types a lot where they ha kind of have their whole persona of being very, very, very sad and and writing songs about being sad. And okay, I'm, I'm kind of sounding like a douchebag. There's nothing wrong with sad songs. Sad songs, I think, are awesome. I think a sad song can make somebody who's being sad feel better. What I'm talking about, though, is kind of wallowing in that, that pity. And more importantly, it's defining you by your depression and, and making that like your core personality trait. My core personality trait is not that I have depression. I don't want that to define me and to be like 
what I am to the rest of the world, that depressed guy. I've experimented. I've tried wallowing in self-pity. I've tried getting angry. Um, I've tried philosophy. So I've tried a lot of different things and none of it works because it's a physical problem in the brain. You can't think your way out of the flu. You can't think your way out of a depressive episode. All you can do is be patient with yourself. And no matter how bad things seem, no matter how long it lasts, you have to know with certainty, with absolute certainty, the core of your being, you have to know that it will pass. And that gives me the strength to wait it out. Um, that gives me the strength to not have obsessive thoughts um, or to think crazy things, uh, you know, ways of ending the depression quickly. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm patient and I wait it out. That's what works for me. Now, drugs, SSRIs, um, mood stabilizers like lithium, they absolutely have a place in treating depression. Absolutely. Um, I've tried them and I didn't like them. I didn't like the side effects. I didn't like the way that they changed the way that I think. They tended to make me very obsessive. Like I, there was a time when um, I was calling my parents on a Saturday and they weren't answering their phone. And so I, I tried calling them like all day and they wouldn't answer their phone. And I didn't know what was going on. 10.30 at night, literally in my robe, I, I worry that somebody's broken in and murdered them. And this intrusive thought just will not go away. And they still not answering their phone. I actually got up and drove the 20 miles to their house. They're in a different city and woke them up knocking on their door. Hey, are you guys all right? Like, it was crazy. Like, at the time, I thought for sure something horrible had happened. This was an, an intrusive, obsessive thought. And it happened when I was taking a drug called Paxil. And I was like, you know what? The cure is worse than the problem for me. I'm going to figure this out. And it took me 10 years. It took me 10 years to, to finally become a functioning depressive, to, to learn how to manage it and not let it sabotage my life or my relationships, um, and to basically deal with it. And again, the answer that I came up with is being patient and treating it like any other illness, like getting the flu. When you get the flu, it's not your fault. You're not a bad person. You're not weak. It's not because of some flaw in you that you're sick. It is beyond your control. And all you can do is love yourself. Say, hey, buddy, <laughs> you're going to get through this. We've gotten through this before. Um, to recognize maybe, not, not at the time, but maybe later, that it builds a little bit of character to, to suffer every once in a while. Um, and there's a beautiful thought that I sometimes have when I'm really, really just like out of it like that, that I'm not the only one. It doesn't make me feel good to know that other people are suffering. But when you are suffering like that, when you are at the bottom of a well looking up, knowing that there are other people going through the same experience and that you're not alone, that is a powerful feeling. That is a powerful medicine for your soul. It helps give you the strength to push through it because you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for those others too. And you know that you're not suffering alone in spite of the fact that you're suffering alone. So Back to the drugs. The drugs absolutely have a place in treatment. If you are depressed for the first time, or if you don't have a, a set of skills, a set of tools that you have developed for yourself, like mental tools, mental skills to deal with these things, you might find yourself in a crisis situation where you're overwhelmed and you can get into a place where you want to hurt yourself or you want to hurt others. And drugs absolutely can help get somebody through that until they can get a more long-term type of care. The problem with simply prescribing drugs to fix depressive episodes though, my opinion is that we over-prescribe and we try to fix everything with the drugs. So selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, they 
basically speed the brain up. They don't make you smarter or make you think faster. It's, it's, not some, it's not that kind of speed. It helps the brain talk to itself in a more normal manner. But it is kind of overclocking the brain a little bit. Now, like any other drug you take, the brain doesn't want to be overclocked. Your body doesn't want to feel high all the time. It wants to return to a center. It wants to find normal again. If you take too many painkillers, your body will make less natural painkillers to try to balance that out. If you take too many stimulants, your body will stop producing its own you know, adrenaline and stuff like that to try to balance things out. If you take something that makes your brain speed up and, and overclock your brain, your body wants to create less of its own serotonin to balance that out. And you can become dependent upon it, but more importantly, the benefit that you get from it over time goes down. And that's why you'll find a lot of people who have taken SSRIs their entire lives, they don't just take one SSRI. Their doctors are constantly trying them on this new SSRI. They're constantly adjusting their dosage. They're constantly trying different combinations of drugs because over time, the drugs just don't work that well anymore. That's one of the reasons why I have basically gone through this drug-free. It's not easy, but it definitely gets better with time. And I've gotten really good at developing my mental toolbox to deal with these types of things. It's like you know your perspective's fucked, so like you just gotta just go normally, you know? <laughs> Sorry. So in summary, we should be comfortable talking to each other about mental health issues and about self-care, and we should feel safe enough and trust people enough to talk about these things and ask for help when we need it. That's important. Number two, depression, movies, television, books, usually get it wrong. Not sad. It's not because your dog died or you, know, or, or you don't feel your own self-value. It's a physical thing. Um, at least some types of depression are. And you just got to wait it out. Think of it like having the flu. Go easy on yourself. Be patient. If you need to stay in bed, stay in bed. Do whatever you need to do. Your self-care. And you will get through it. And you will feel normal again. And you'll look back on it and be like, wow, I can't believe I thought things were so bad. Drugs are absolutely important. They will help get people through a crisis so that they don't hurt themselves or hurt others. And you should not feel bad for taking them. You should definitely talk to a doctor. You should definitely talk to a therapist if you need to. You should not feel bad about seeking help. And you shouldn't feel like you're dependent upon drugs to, to get through stuff. None of that stuff matters. It's not a contest. All that matters is that you get the care that you need to make it through it. Um, and then the last thing is, you can be a depressive person and function in life and maintain your relationships. Um, you can even be a positive or a relatively happy depressive person. Like I said, when I'm depressed, nobody realizes it. But that's me. You're not me. You're you. If you need to talk to friends and family, if you need to talk to a doctor or a therapist, please do so. You are one of the few intelligent beings in the entire universe. Humanity and intelligent life is so exceedingly rare. We've never found any other instance of it. We are all that we have. Each one of you is special and you're like a rare butterfly. And losing even one of you, if even one of you suffers, that is a great injustice to humanity. You all have value and we're all that we have. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe.